Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habita fillah. A question was asked. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Khalid. May Allah bless you and all of the Muslims. Ameen. I have a question. I understood the basics of wh of who we consider Ahlul Sunnah, but how do we determine who is from Ahlul uh, from the innovators? If they just have a few issues. For example, some brothers claim anyone who makes takfir of a Muslim of Muslim rulers is Khawarij. Yet I have heard that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala made takfir of the Uthman Dola. So what's the difference? Why is one accepted and the other rejected? This is actually a very big uh, issue in mas'ala. Mas and I don't know if we can really give it its, its haq, but we'll just give you a very brief, brief, brief um, uh, understanding and uh, how the Salaf were with regards to this mas'ala. So you mentioned, we'll start with the, the portion you mentioned about Imam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. And this is a big uh, issue of controversy about him going out against the Uthman Dola uh, and um, take fear of them and, and so on and so forth. And this is what many of the people of his enemies uh, during the time, and especially after him, obviously, uh, wrote extensively about, and from the most uh, infamous of them is one known as Dahlan. Uh, and he was a scholar in Mecca, Mubtadi al-Sufi, who wrote extensively after, I think about 50 years after Muhammad ibn Wahhab about this. And he has a treatise called Fitna to Wahhabiyya and other treaties. And we hear many of these modern day du'at. I think uh, Yasser Qadi has now come out of his shell and is even more extensively uh, beginning to pick up on some of these old arguments and uh, with his new modern concepts of uh, approach to Islam. So first and foremost, uh, with regards to that, the scholars mention and they've refuted extensively um, the claims that he made khuruj, that he went out against the leader, the Uthman Dola, uh, in that the arguments that they use, uh, many of the scholars here in Saudi and otherwise, is at first that uh, Mecca and Medina were not under Uthman uh, I mean, uh, the Najd was not under the control of the Ottoman Empire, in that really a lot of sheikhdoms, uh, you know, small, uh, you know, because there was nothing here. It was just desert. So there would be really little benefit from stationing your soldiers and, you know, they were left more or less autonomous so that they didn't go against the leader. They had no one really who was a leader of them, you know, because that was before there was a thing called Saudi Arabia. So that's uh, one of the things that they mention. Another point is it isn't the rejection of the concept of takfir. That's the issue. Uh, and people, a lot of people that you hear, you may hear a lot of brothers mention in this. It's not always based on knowledge. For one, you, you have to realize that. Number two, uh, so you should focus more on what the tulab al-ilm are saying and the scholars are saying. Uh, you know, and, and it's a big bab, it's a big uh, series of masail, of issues that are very uh, deep. And so it isn't about specifically, it's about making takfir unjustly, making takfir without the, the wabit, without the principles, without the uh, right to do so. Uh, and this is the, the biggest issue. So it's actually an issue of the abuse of takfir. It doesn't mean anyone who says they're a Muslim. For example, we don't have any qualms about Bashar al-Assad saying he's not a Muslim, that he is a mushrik, he is an Alawi, uh, which is a very deviant sect of even the Shia, even the Rafa that make takfir of them. But they, you know, have ta'aw and they're cooperating because they have political uh, commonalities or common enemies and so on and so forth. So that's a whole nother story. But the the point is, it isn't just about being over a Muslim country, but it has to do with actually the principles of takfir. That to what takfir has the wabit, has criterion. To what takfir has shurut, it has conditions. Takfir has muana, meaning things that prohibit one from making takfir. Takfir is yan qasam al kismain. It is divided into two uh, types: takfir al ma'ayyin and takfir al mutlaq. Takfir al mutlaq 
meaning the general takfir. Whoever does this is a disbeliever. Takfir al Ma'ayan is talking about Tanzil had a hukum ala shakhs. It's talking about putting, making a ruling on a specific individual. Oh, they did this and this and this. They fit the description of takfir. So now we need to make sure that aqama alayhi al hujjah that he's had the proof established to him or the truth has been established to him he doesn't have the excuse of ignorance he doesn't have the excuse of ta'wil of you know misinterpretation he doesn't have the excuse of being new to islam which is related to uh uh, uh ignorance and he doesn't have the excuse of ta'wil for uh, or have the excuse of uh of a uh, khata you know just making a mistake you know, maybe from slip of the tongue, whatever the case may be, he may have uttered a statement of kufr or whatever the case may be. So these are very in-depth masail. But just just to give us a, a, a glance with regards to your question. So that is some of the issues with uh, Imam Muhammad of the Wahhab. That's one of the things. Now there's a whole other set of views obviously from the Uthman or from the uh, the Uthmani, the Turkish uh, perspective that they have their own in their history books about what happened and saying that he went against a Muslim ruler. Another thing you have to realize were what was the Aqidah and creed of the Uthman of the Uthmani empire at that time. You know, it was well known and well documented that a lot of uh, Shirkiyat practices were uh, were sanctioned by the the leaders and so forth and the, they had these types of beliefs you know extreme sufism meaning grave worship and things like this so that's another that's a whole another issue so those things would warrant uh, the issue of takfir that's where takfir would come in as far as that issue so those are as i said we can't really give it justice but that is in a nutshell i hope some clarification of why where those differences uh, come into play the second point is, and we'll read just uh, very quickly some statements of uh, one of the Salaf Imam uh, Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, a Hanbali scholar. And he says, So Imam Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, it's not permissible to fight the leader. And go against him, to revolt against him, even if he's oppressive. So that shows that as long as he remains in the fold of Islam as a Muslim, it's impermissible. And we have ample adilla, because I don't want to get into the issue of takfir, but anybody who really cares and is truthful about this issue, you know, we know the takfiris mostly are not truthful. Go go to Sahih Muslim. Go to Sahih Muslim Kitab al-Imara. Go, go there and then come back to us. Taib, for the adilla, ample adilla. Uh, so, so the Prophet ﷺ said, be patient, even if it was an Ethiopian slave, meaning an Ethiopian slave was the ruler. So it's not about any anything else, but it has to do with, is this person still in the fold of Islam? The second mas'ala that's very important with regards to this, uh, the issue of, uh, it's not just if they are disbeliever, then all of a sudden it's okay, you just go and do it. No, it has to do with uh, many other things that the scholars documented or the scholars detailed in their classical texts the, from the fuqaha especially about this issue of rebellion and the issue of khuruj and the issue of uh, fighting the um, uh, bugat, you know, those people who rebel and then fighting the khuwaris. That's Those are two different issues. So meaning that... that uh, that these issues are are, are are detailed around the list. So just because he's now a just say if say if the scholars, not just these people who aren't even tuwaylab al ilm, not even small students of knowledge, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Muhammad, and Fatima who who study with Faisal or some other Mubtadiya based whose usul is takfir that they make a claim that someone's a kafir. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the ulama, ulama sunnah. Ulama Sunnah, who are looking at these Dawabit and these criterion and making and Tanzilu Hukumala Ma'ayan. They are make the ruling upon uh, a specific individual. So say if they, the scholars of Sunnah, okay, and of course it doesn't take Ijma, it doesn't take, but maybe one scholar of Ahl Sunnah sees them. And this is the case with in many uh, contemporary issues with the issue of Saddam Hussein, bin Basmik, take fear of him, 
uh, Imam Muqbil made takfir of him. Ulama that we recognize, ulama sunnah. Uh, but maybe not all the ulama saw the same. So the point is, is they have to have proof. And that is the ijtihad of that scholar looking at the usul of this person, Saddam Hussein, and what and looking at how that fits on the scale of Islam and again the conditions for takfir. So Bin Baz made his ruling based upon that. And likewise, Imam Mukbil and others. And so again, it requires a scholar from Ahl Sunnah to be of those people, you know, of the caliber of knowledge and looking at those things. Or an Islamic Qadi, you know, this is for the judges and so forth, the people who have that station to be able to implement those conditions. So say if they did and they said so-and-so is a disbeliever, for example. Then the issue is, another issue, as Imam uh, Ben Baz details extensively in one of his treatises, about the uh, conditions for making khuruj, you know, is that it's not going to be uh, like many issues in the shara, mabni ala maslahu wa mafsada, that it's built upon the harms and the benefits. So it isn't just that, oh, he's a disbeliever. Hey, go, take him out and, and remove him from authority and massive bloodshed and the women and children are being slaughtered and it's a civil war in the country. Look at Yemen, Tunisia, uh, uh, Iraq, Syria, um, Libya, we could just rattle that off with, without even thinking, you know, that they all have some relation to that same principle, even if several, if not most, several of those leaders were disbelievers. And the scholars of Ahl Sunnah uh, have affirmed that. But the point is, look at the facade of doing that. So it, the point isn't just, you know, it isn't just going and looking at insanity, but it's looking at the shara. It's not looking at our hawa and our desires. We got to remove him. We got to destroy this. We got to kill this one. No, it's not based upon that. It's based upon kitabi la wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the qawaid wa usul ahl sunnati wal jamaa. Looking at the masala and the mafasid. Looking at the harms and the benefits. Is this going to mean that every household that people can't earn a living, people are in famine, the disbelievers are going to enter the country and take it over and monitor it now and 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 be the the supervisors of it? Uh, are they going to come and take the, the the resources now? You know, you've opened the door for all kind of fitna and facade and a civil war amongst Muslims. Okay? All because you thought you had the right to go against, you began by protesting, you began by this, and the, the evil tyrant reacted by oppressing you with severity and look at the door and it just doesn't end. Five years of chaos. People don't even know which way to turn and just want peace and stability. They want to earn a living. And I know so many Syrians. I talk to them all the time. I know so many Yemenis and I talk to them all the time about what is about on the ground. And I know people on the ground, especially in Yemen, you know, people want to just have bread. They want their child not to die of malnourishment. They want to have a, a, a life. And so because some people believe that they're in this fitness, in this chaos, that there's rectification, it's not, okay? So that's a whole different issue of even the the wabit of khuruj, you know, the conditions for rebellion, even if it's a, a disbelieving leader. We're not talking about a tyrant. A tyrant you don't rebel against, but we're talking about that. And those are other masail that are big issues, but I'm just giving you the malachis, so the, the short short of it. So, going back to the statement of Imam Babahari, of someone, you know, we have a difference. I know many people who have the aqidah with al-asma wa sifat and the issues of tawheed and the issues of, of uh, the six pillars of Islam and stuff like this, but they're takfiri, they're khariji, because their whole thing and their whole dawah is based on rebellion, folda, and takfir. That's what they, that's their usul. So it's just one issue in usul that takes them off the sunnah, that we can never ta'awan with these kind of people. You understand? How, what's the delil? Why can't we just say, hey, he's a nice guy, even though he believes in blood, he believes in chaos and destruction, but his aqidah in general is good. Oh, he has such nice manners when we eat, we go out to lunch and have drink shai with him. It's so beautiful. And this and that. And the, no, that, that stuff, we don't even consider that. It's not even looked at. The bottom line is a big usul that ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, qadim wa hadithin, from the past up to now, have established that principle that the one who is uh, you know, who is a tekfiri, the one who has the that characteristic of the khwarij, which is tekfir of people for the major sins, kharijan sunnah, 
Imam Barbahari said, فَلَيْسَ مِنَ السُنَّةَ كِتَالَ Sultan, فَإِنَّ فِيهِ فَسَادَ الدِّينَ وَالدُّنْيَا SubhanAllah, he said this over 1100 years ago. He said, لَيْسَ مِنَ السُنَّةَ It's not from the Sunnah to fight the Sultan. فَإِنَّ فِيهِ فَسَادَ الدِّينَ وَالدُّنْيَا SubhanAllah, we see it around us right now. And if you don't know, now you know. He said, Rahimallah Ta'ala, he said, it's not from the Sunnah to fight the Sultan, for verily in it is fasad ad deen. It's a destruction of the deen. Yemen, Syria, Iraq. Iraq's now overtaken by Shia, Rafida. Um, Libya, subhanAllah, they just bombed a, a, uh, a refugee migrant center. Okay, fasad. فَإِنَّ فِيهِ فَسَادَ الدِّينْ وَالدُّنْيَا and the dunya. I, I, I think the average living would just like to have bread and, and like to have jobs and go out and be able to take their children to school and stuff like that without worrying about the school being bombed, without having the teachers not having a, a income, with, with, uh, doctors, hospitals being bombed. You know, people like that. They like to have health care. They like to live and they like to eat and drink like other human beings and live an honorable life. But Ahlul Takfir wa Tafjir, they, they don't really consider that. They just consider their worldview, their takfiri paradigm, their extremism, their love for blood, that's what they make taqdeem of. But this is your lesson in about the khawarij and the takfiriyim. So getting to the point, then Imam Baba Hari says, وَمَنْ خَرَجَ عَلَى إِمَامْ مِنْ أَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَهُوَ خَارِجِي That's what I wanted to say. Imam Baba Hari said, again, مَنْ خَارِجَ عَلَى إِمَامْ مِنْ أَئِمَّةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Whoever goes against the imam from amongst the imams of the Muslims, that can include any, any Muslim country, okay? فَهُوَ خَارِجِي He labeled him as a خَارِجِي This is how the Salaf, this is the point being. Meaning that someone, he could have the usul of Ahl Sunnah almost in many things. But it's just this issue of revolt and rebellion and takfir. That he's a خَارِجِي Likewise, someone could have many issues in the aqid of Ahl Sunnah, but the issue of Qadr, he goes, he doesn't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Well, this is a major thing. You know, this is a type of kufr. Or likewise, you know, many, many issues. There are many people, for example, the Jamaat al Ikhwan al Muslimin. Okay, there are many Ikhwanis, they have various different Ikhwan al Muslimin. That's why I said Jamaat, I didn't say the sect. Ikhwan al Muslimin, I don't regard them as a sect. Okay. As some of our ulama have made clear, that they're a jama'ah. They're a contemporary group that does not necessarily share a common aqidah. Their creed is not the same. There are some Muqala Muslimin that have almost all the same uh, aqidah of Ahl Sunnati with jama'ah. There are some Muqala Muslimin that are Ashidi in their aqidah. There are some Muqala Muslimin that have all kind of Sufi practices. There are some Muqala Muslimin that are just takfiri more so in their uh, from aspects of their usul, okay? But they unite because they have some certain principles in their methodology of how they believe in dealing with a leader and their bay'ah and other things that make them a jama'ah, not a sect. A sect is united upon an aqidah, ashari, uh, mu'tazila, uh, the khawarij. They united upon issues of creed that make them, uh, 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 you know, a, a group that have a certain belief. So the point being, you could have people, but he's still a Khwana Muslimin. But his Aqidah is, oh, is Salafi. You know, it's from the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. Illa, except this small issue, except his methodology in approaching maybe politics or the leader. Okay? Just for that. For that alone, we say he's not from Ahl Sunnah. And when we say someone is from Ahl Sunnah, there's a couple of ways to look at that. Okay? There is the way in which. Ahl Sunnah uh, in general, okay. There's a general uh, someone being a Sunni, okay, meaning that they're not every everyone who's not Shia. That's a general belief. That's a classification you'll find amongst uh, non-Muslims in the academic world, and you'll find that in general in the Muslim world as well. You know that they are a Sunni, but a more sp the 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 tarif khas the specific definition from Ahl Sunnah we would go back to we return back to the Salaf, meaning those who are on the aqidah 
from the book and the sunnah and the madhab of the salaf, ahla hadith, ahla athar, what they were united upon. What they were united upon. Because you will have those from ahla hadith who made mistakes in aqidah. But they still were considered from ahla sunnah, but he had a mistake he might have had some influence. He had some aspects of the Ashari creed as far as the Sifat. Many. There was many uh, Ahla Hadith. Or there were some of Ahla Hadith like this. And, and others throughout Islamic history. Okay? But the point being is <coughs> that, that when we talk about someone being Sunni from Ahla Sunnah, looking at the way the Salaf, they're talking about a united creed, a unified creed and approach to Islam and minhaj and madhab, that those who depart from that are not considered from Ahl Sunnah. And then there's also the issue of how you deal with someone's mistakes. Maybe someone from Ahl Sunnah, but he makes a mistake in this issue of takfir, but he's open to correction. He's open, he's not, or he has some light issues with it. Because there's people, because Ahl Sunnah tafawit wa Ahl Bid'ah tafawit. Ahl Sunnah has different levels, Ahl Bid'ah has different levels. So I hope that kind of answered your question. And that, uh, what's the difference? Is that some of the people, uh, you know, they have a general aqid of Ahl Sunnah, but they depart on some very important masail or issues, or an issue which is codified and strong and unified with Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah as holding as a principle to distinguish Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Bid'ah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.